guys, welcome back. This is the first episode of Armchair Adventures Series 2. This week, we're joined by some songwriters from the African and Caribbean community. Hi, Connie. I'm Celestial Flo. Hey, I'm Abby. Hello, everyone. I'm Carol. Hey, I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Pauline. And together we have written and composed a brand new anti-racist unity song to celebrate African diaspora history. African diaspora history? What does that mean? Well, African diaspora refers to the African people being scattered all over the world. We have written a song that brings people together to combat racism and highlights that so-called Black history is part of everyone's history and not just something you think about in October. Wow, that sounds amazing. I can't wait to hear the song. Do you guys have any ideas about where you're going to take us all on an armchair adventure today? No, not yet, I'm afraid. We are quite busy today, to be honest, getting ready for the recital. And we just haven't had time to think. Do you guys sing the song as well then? Well, yes, but we have some help from the fantastic choir. They'll be along on the call in a moment, ready for their final rehearsal before this afternoon's performance. I can't wait to meet them. I love singing and songwriting for that matter. I actually formed a girl band at school with some of my friends, but I've left the band now. Artistic differences? Kind of. They just always want to sing songs about boys and crushes and that. And I wanted to sing about things that really matter, like politics and climate change and that kind of thing. So I said this and then Keisha got dead mardy and started saying I was boring. The band's on Instagram and they photoshopped all the photos of me and replaced them with chess pieces. Chess pieces? Well, yeah. What's more boring than chess? It's really knocked my confidence, though. I've not sung since. Oh, that sounds very unkind, Connie. Well, yeah, I guess it is. Where are you performing your song then this afternoon? Outside the Marcus Rashford Moral in Withington, Manchester. I love Marcus Rashford and everything he's done for school children. It was just horrible, all those terrible racist things some people said and wrote after the Euros. To be honest, Connie, I lost my faith in humanity at that time. Although seeing all those people, especially the children, there taking the knee together helped me feel a bit better about the world. Why do people take the knee? To show that they believe in justice and fairness for everyone coming. To show that they believe people should not be treated unfairly because of the colour of their skin. To show that racism has no place in our society. The first person to take the knee was an American football player and he chose to kneel as a peaceful protest after careful consideration. Kneeling was chosen because it is a respectful gesture and the shape your body makes as you kneel mirrors the shape of a flag flown at half mast, which is something that happens after a tragedy. I know, listener. Let's all take the knee together. You can pretend that you're outside the Marcus Rashford mural after the Euros if you want, or that you're a footballer before a big game. The important thing is, we all do it together. Ready? Go! Oh, the trouble with taking the knee at my age is it's so blinking hard to get back up. Here, let me help you, Pauline. Oh, thanks, love. You know, Connie, African diaspora people have been a big part of helping this country become what it is today. Has racism improved in your lifetime, do you think, Pauline? I was hoping things had changed since my dad was young, say. He came to England as part of what's known as the Windrush generation. He was asked to come. He was asked to Britain to help the country rebuild after World War II. But he's still got the monkey calls the thrown bananas, the nasty words, and the reaction towards those young footballers after they miss their penalties after the Euros proved that things haven't changed anywhere near enough. Racism is very much still an issue in this country, I'm afraid, Connie. The messages of hope from the children that covered up the nasty words written on Marcus's mural were wonderful to see, though. What did they say? Things like, you inspire me, you are my role model and national hero, and you stepped up for us, Marcus. Those kind of things, really. I know, listener, 
Let's all think of a positive message to write to Marcus and the other footballers and pretend to stick it on a mural. Ready? Go. Oh, well, I think I'll write this. What do you think? Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, that, that looks really good. I think I'll try this. What do you think? Oh, oh let me try and stick it on. Look at that. Oh, oh no. that's brilliant. No, let me have Put a mine next yeah. Yeah. Don't forget to take a selfie. Oh, get me oh, in, get me in. Get me The nasty words that were written and said after the Euros are only from a few people now, though, aren't they? Most people aren't like that, though, are they? Like, you know, like proper racist racist, if you know what I mean. Connie. It's not just the obvious racism that Pauline's dad experienced or the footballers experienced after the Euros that we want to highlight. It is important for your listeners to understand that treating other people unfairly can be something people do without thinking. Most people don't do this on purpose. They do it because they've always done things that way and never questioned it. And when you are on the receiving end of lots of unfair acts by lots of people, that makes you feel bad or left out. They add up. That's when you see whole communities of people being unfairly treated and not receiving the same opportunities or benefits as other groups of people. It's okay to get it wrong in the past. It is what you do in the present that counts. That's why we wrote the song. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. It's really made me think. Well, we better get the choir on the line so you can do your final rehearsal. was amazing. You must be the choir. Hi Connie, how are you doing listeners? Yeah, we are Be Positive. And we are here to be a blessing. We want you to be blessed and we want us all to be positive. Ah, but I'm afraid we've got a problem. What's that? Well, our soloist hasn't turned up. I'm afraid she's having to self-isolate and we are in need of a replacement. Or today's performance cannot go ahead. Don't worry, you lot. Connie is a singer. Oh, I can't. I haven't sung since, well, the incident with the band. And, well, I'm just a school kid. And besides, I haven't had time to practice. (laughs) You said you wanted to sing about something that really matters, Connie. You won't get a better opportunity than this one. I guess not. But, well, no one will listen to me. And I don't think my voice is important. And besides, I'm... Well, why? Oh, Connie, your voice is very important, isn't it, everyone? Yeah. Oh, yes, oh, true. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Come on, Connie. I think we know where we'd like to take you on an armchair adventure now, Connie. Really? Absolutely. We are going to take everyone on an African diaspora history adventure to discover how racism is everyone's problem. And we have to speak or sing together in one voice before real change can happen. Where are we? We're on a march. A march for freedom and equality for all people. We're all gathered here to listen to Dr. Martin Luther King speak. Dr. Martin Luther King was an American preacher humanitarian and activist who used the power of his words and non-violent action to make the world a fairer place to be. We are here on the 28th of August, it's 1963. So many people feel the excitement, the anticipation. A buzz in the air. Floods, freedom, people shouting. Amen. Clapping, cheering. A change is coming. Something is happening. Can you feel it? Warm sun, a cool breeze, change in the air. Different faces, cultures, nationalities, men, women and children, arm in arm. Placards, peace and unity. We are part of history today. What do you see, hear or feel at the March for Freedom, listener? I know all this is like way back in history, but I don't get it. Why were people so racist in the first place? 
I could never be racist. I treat everyone equally. I have some very sad news for all of you, and I think uh, sad news for all of our fellow citizens and people who love peace all over the world. And that is that Martin Luther King was shot and was killed tonight in Memphis. <laughs> I don't understand. Why? A lot of good people have lost their lives in the fight for equality and fairness, Connie. Where are we now? At a school. A lady called Jane Elliott is the teacher. All those with brown eyes can come and get your lunch. I've got brown eyes. That's lucky. Are you guys not getting any? You've all got brown eyes. We're just going to watch this one, Connie. Mm, suit yourself. Brown eyed pupils are cleaner and smarter. <gasps> Psst, that's us guys. Oh, I'm buzzing. Blue eyed pupils are lazy and sit around doing nothing. They will have to wait for their lunch. And after lunch, Brown-eyed pupils get to play on the field, but blue-eyed do not. What colour eyes do you have, listener? Would you be with me playing in the field, or would you be stuck watching with the blueies? I know, listener. If you have brown eyes, you pretend to play on the field with me. If you have blue eyes, or any other colour for that matter, you just pretend to watch us have fun. Ready? Go! Whoa, playing on that field is really fun. I feel like proper important. It's so much better having brown eyes, don't you think? Okay, children, that part of the exercise is over. It is now time to swap. From now on, it'll be the blue-eyed children that have the special treatment. What? What exercise? I thought she said brown eyes were best. I'm afraid, Connie. You've just taken part in an experiment designed to teach children about racism. What do you mean? Well, on the day after Martin Luther King was shot, a white teacher called Jane Elliott set out to teach children how easy it can be to take part in things that are unfair and unjust to others. How easy is it to accept that through something as simple as eye colour that you are better than someone in some way? And how easy it is to act and think differently because of this. Also, she wanted her white pupils to understand in some way what it felt like to be discriminated against, like black pupils felt and still feel. So she invented the blue eye, brown eye experiment, which has been repeated many times since. Oh my gosh, have I just been... Oh no, I've just acted in a racist way, haven't I? Does that mean I'm a racist? Connie, calm down. I'm so sorry. I'm so ashamed. Connie, it is what you do next that counts. Actions speak much louder than words. Hi, guys. If you're enjoying this podcast and want to learn more about how to combat racism... Get your teacher to download our free lesson plan. All you have to do is visit www.armchair-adventures.co.uk and click on the free download. Where are we now? This is Nelson Mandela, a civil rights leader in South Africa. Why is he in prison? He was in prison for protesting against apartheid and for equal rights. Apartheid is a way of governing people that separates African diaspora people and white people and led to African diaspora people being treated very unfairly. He must hate the people that did this to him. How would you feel, listener, if someone put you in prison for believing in fairness and justice for all. Nelson or Madiba, his clan or family name, 
tried to understand and educate people that imprisoned him. He inspired people all over the world. On his release, he collaborated with white leaders and strived to make South Africa a place of equality for people regardless of race or colour. Now it is 1936 and we are at Hitler's Olympic Games in Germany. Hitler led a party called the Nazis and they believed that white people were the best race and any other races, including African diaspora people, are inferior to them. Who is that man on the podium? He has a gold medal around his neck. That's Jesse Owens and that is one of the four gold medals he won at this Games. Jesse is an African diaspora man, and he was that fast, they called him the Bokai Bullet. Jesse believed that it was important to show Hitler and people like him that people of all colours and races can achieve amazing things and sports can be used to unite people. I know, listener. Let's all pretend to be Jesse Owen on the podium receiving a gold medal at the Olympic Games. What an amazing feeling. Who's the guy hugging Jesse? That is Luz Long. He is a German and white competitor who came second. He was also very brave. He embraced Jesse in front of Hitler, the leader of his country. Jesse and Luz's actions changed minds and brought people together at a really challenging time for the whole world. You see, Connie, it is so important that people act to combat racism wherever it occurs. If you witness racism or people being unfair to others because of the colour of their skin, you have to call it out. You have to act. That's how change will happen. But everyone we've met on today's adventure so far has been like in a position of power or like famous or something. And apart from Jane, they've all been men. What's going on here? These women are computers. What do you mean, they're computers? Well, the original computers were people, mathematicians, working out big sums and calculations. These women are helping NASA with the space race. Space race? Yes. It's 1961 and these women are trying to put John Glenn into space. It is still segregation in America at this time. So this all-African diaspora group of remarkable women have to work separately from white people. Separate toilets, separate canteen, separate water fountains, and a lot lower pay. That's so unfair. But even under such challenging circumstances, these wonderful, overlooked, under-recognised women made a profound difference which eventually resulted in the first moon landing. The most famous one was Catherine Johnson. Catherine was the first African diaspora woman to work as a NASA scientist. Her calculations were essential in getting astronauts into space safely, and most importantly, getting them back to Earth in one piece. African diaspora women like Catherine have made a profound impact on the world we live in. We need to shout this from the rooftops because the contribution of women of colour have been overlooked for too long. But what can I do? What can a white school kid from Ashton do to combat racism? You can do a lot, Connie. Change takes everyone coming together, working together to achieve great things. Great things like travelling to space. Like walking on the moon. Like freedom and equality for all people. No matter the 
color. People will hear what you've got to teach. Unity and love is all. understand why it is so important for you to join in with us now, Connie? Yes, I do. I was not using my voice, had no confidence to sing. No one would care and I was afraid. I was afraid of what people might You join in as well. Together, every voice counts. That was an experience I'll never forget. Me neither. No, I. Absolutely. That was an amazing experience. Wow, you sang beautifully, Connie. Thank you so much. I think it really helps when you are singing about something that really matters. Well Well done. done. Thank you so much. Today's adventure has taught me that anyone can act unfairly to others and it's what you do next that counts. It's also taught me that everyone must come together for real change to happen. The collective voice is so much stronger. Strength in unity. No voices left behind. It's wonderful to hear you say that, Connie. Change doesn't have to always be a big thing, you know. Multiple small acts by ordinary people make a big difference. If you only know 10 people, influence them, educate them, have a conversation with them. That's how we can make real change happen. Thanks, Abby. Well, as always, I have the best customers a travel agent could ask for. Thank you. Next time, listener, another one of my lovely customers gets to take us on another armchair adventure, inspired by their passions and interests. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye Bye. for now. Bye. 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 Take care. End call now. Lovely. Today's adventure was a Made by Mortals production in partnership with the Caribbean and African Health Network. Co-produced by Celestial Flow, Pauline Omaboy, Abby Duwu, Chris McKindy, Mandy Jelenji, and Carol May Nelson. Featuring the Be Positive Choir, funded by our Manchester Fund and the Big Life Group. Adventure. Anywhere you like.